Good day everyone, I'm Jacques from Myra Distribution's technical department and today I'm going to be bringing you a video on 10 of the more common issues or pitfalls or problems that we experience on the Grandstream PBX. This video is done entirely on Grandstream's demo platform, which is a demonstration PBX, either of the 6200 series or 6500 series, um, has all these standard buttons as a, a real PBX would, and is great for just checking up on things and uh, tidying up your knowledge. So the first thing I'm going to look at today is our VoIP trunk. Just adding our SIP account to the unit. Um, important thing to remember is that we have register and peer trunks. So a peer trunk is used in non-registration environments, generally when your PBX needs to communicate to some sort of other device um, that is not a SIP provider. Alternatively, the register trunk is generally what we're used to. This allows us to set up a SIP account to a provider using a username and a password. When you've added your account, you can always double check to see if it's working under the dashboard red light unavailable and a blue light means it's working. Next I just want to look at a simple pitfall that we sometimes experience when users are configuring and setting up their extensions especially if not making use of the zero config feature when creating an extension the authentication ID isn't created by default. So you may have cases where you input the correct extension number and the correct password, but your extension doesn't register. Or just make sure that you've added uh, an authorization ID that matches the one set up on your SIP endpoint. For the third one, we're looking at a fairly simple issue. So on our dashboard, we can see which of the UCM's ports are currently in use. Uh, it's important to just check up on these to see if the device, either the FXO line that you plugged in or the analog device that you plugged in, if the PBX is picking it up, um, whether it be you've plugged the FXO line into the wrong port, you can always just verify this over here just to make sure that the port that you configured is the one the PBX is actually seeing. Next, we have a problem that we experience on some of the analog trunks. Uh, occasionally, depending on which area you're in, uh, it tends to differ from location to location. Having the caller ID enabled causes inbound calls to just ring and not actually pick up on the PBX. So if you have analog lines and you're experiencing issues where people say that they can't call into your system, just have a quick look at the use caller ID, untick it and see if that sorts it for you. A common one we also experience on our in and our outbound routes will be the patterns used actually to allow calls in and out. So this is a fairly simple one if you know what to look for. So in this case, we're making use of a pattern that says underscore X and a period. So what this means is that the number that is a, that we're allowed to dial out can start with any number, x being any rational number, uh, followed by a period means of any length. So this route is telling us that any number dialed that starts with a number of any length is allowed to make use of this route out. Inversely, if we remove the period, we're telling the route that only a phone number dialed that has one number may be dialed. Next, we're going to take a quick look at the updates for the system. Uh, always important to keep your system up to date uh, for security and feature purposes. And you'll find that under maintenance and upgrade. So I would always recommend that you make use of the manual upload as this gives you the most control of what you're doing. And it causes the PBX to only do updates when you need it to do the updates. Um, always remember, especially if you've got a PBX on older firmware, that the updates need to be done chronologically. If you're on version 14, you need to do 15, then 16, then 17, then 18, and finally 19. The last few things I want to take a look at have less to do with the interface of the PBX and more the physical hardware. So what sometimes happens is we have uh, 
hardware issues on the FXO and FXS ports. Uh, this tends to happen during rough weather times. Um, FXO ports uh, do tend to get damaged during lightning. Uh, anyone with an ADSL router can uh, attest to that. And um, the, the testing on the Grandstream PBX is, is fairly simple for that. So by default, when the PBX is switched off, your FXO ports and your FXS ports are bridged together in what they call a lifeline test. So by pairing the PBX off and just plugging your FXO line in, you should receive a dial tone on the corresponding FXS port. Um, if this fails, either of the ports could be damaged. Speaking of power related disturbances, you may experience that your PBX is stuck in a boot loop. Um, this often happens whilst the unit was doing updates and the update failed, the update crashed, maybe the unit was rebooted, power dipped, um, anything in that line and the unit is stuck in a boot loop. Um, they do have a recovery mode in which you can flash the firmware uh, or using TFTP you can always flash the unit to try and restore the firmware to a working condition. In a similar vein to what we've just discussed, the network ports on the unit are also susceptible to damage sometimes. Um, and you'll find this when you plug it into your switch or your PoE adapter or whatever you're using to power it, and the data light doesn't come on. And you'll see it over here on the dashboard, either the LAN light or the WAN light, plug it in on your side, but the PBX isn't picking that up. Um, could definitely mean something on your port is damaged. And the last thing I want to mention, uh, something that we've seen sometimes, anything with writable memory, um, as like the PBX, um, the writable memory can in some cases go corrupt, where it, the, the, the unit refuses to write settings to the hard drive. Um, this is fairly easy to pick up. You make changes to the PBX, you save, and after reboot, your changes are gone. Or you factory reset the unit, and off it comes up after the factory reboot, your settings are exactly the same. Um, this is generally indicative of the unit struggling to write the settings onto its memory. Well, thank you for joining me today, everyone. These have just been a couple of the more common issues that we sometimes experience on the Grandstream series PBXs.